All right, so we spent pretty much the entire last class just doing pretty basic, pretty fundamental stuff with, with trig, sine, cosine, and tan. So the first one on the flipboard looks like this. So we should be able to do this. I mean, we should, based upon what we did in the last class, we should be able to do this one on our own. So it would be good practice for you to try doing this one on your own and then seeing if you get the same thing that I get. All right, so I look at my picture. I look at this is 52 degrees. So again, it's not a matter of guessing and checking as far as which one do we use, sine, cosine, or tan. We just look. And okay, this is the angle that I know. This is the side that I want. And this is the side that I know. So in relation to this angle, what side is this and what side is this? Okay, so in relation to this angle, this is the adjacent side. And of course, this is the hypotenuse. So which one, sine, cosine, or tan, uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse? And that's how I determine which one I'm going to do. So when I initially set it up, I set it up like this. The cosine of 52 degrees is equal to x, which is the adjacent side, over 10, which is the hypotenuse. So that's my initial equation. Then I do some algebra, and I, I try to get that x by itself. So I multiply both sides by 10 to clear out that fraction, because now this 10 and this 10 will cancel. And so now what I'm left over with is that x is equal to 10 times the cosine of 52. Put that into my calculator and I get that x is equal to 6.2. Easy enough. All right, so come over here. Similar question. Okay, so here's my angle. Okay, so in relation to this angle, which two sides are these? Well, in relation to this angle, this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. So I can do something like that. I say that the tan of x equals the opposite side, which is 4, over the adjacent side, which is 9. So the tan of x is equal to 4 over 9. So I already know what the tan is. So when I already know what the tan is, I go to my calculator, I do second tan, 4 divided by 9, and I get x is equal to 24 degrees. All right, so come over here, do it again. Okay, so this is the side that I want, this is the side that I know, and this is the angle that I know. So in relation to this angle, what side is this and what side is this? Well, this is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. So which function uses the opposite side and the hypotenuse? Well, that is the sine. So my initial equation looks like this. So the sine of 37 degrees equals the opposite side, which is x, over the adjacent side, oops, sorry, over the hypotenuse, which is 17. So sine 37 equals x over 17. Do some algebra, multiply both sides by 17 to clear out this fraction. So now these 17s will cancel each other out. And all I have over here is x. So x equals 17 times the sine of 37. At this point, this can go straight into the calculator. And so then x is equal to 10.2. Okay. So now, what does it mean to solve a triangle? To solve a triangle means we're using given measures to find unknown angle measures or side lengths of a triangle. So to solve the triangle, we're trying to come up with as, as much information, all the sides and all the angles that we possibly can, given what we have. Okay, so let's do this one. Alright, so I'm given this information. And I'm trying to solve the triangle, so I want all the side lengths and I want all the angle measures. Well, obviously, I already have side length BC. And I already have side length AC. Easiest way that I know to get side AB is just to do Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, so I've got AC, which is 7.5. I already had that one. BC, I have 5. And now if I do 7.5 squared plus 5 squared and find the square root, I'll just by Pythagorean theorem, I'll get that AB is equal to 9. Okay, so that's nothing new. That's just Pythagorean theorem. If I know two sides of a right triangle, I can always get the third side by doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, now let's figure out how we can get some angles. Let's get angle A. Uh, let's see if I can get it showing up. There we go. Okay, oh, there. So there's angle A. So in relation to angle A, I know this side and I know this side. So in re again, in relation to angle A, what sides are those? If here's A, this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. So which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? Well, that's tan. So I've got tan of A. The tan of A equals the opposite side, which is 5, 
over the adjacent side, which is 7.5. So the tan of A equals 5 divided by 7.5. I can do second tan on my calculator, second tan, 5 divided by 7.5, and it'll give me the measure of angle A. If I round to a whole number, the measure of angle A is 34 degrees. Now, I could do that all over again to get the measure of angle B, or I could just remember that all the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if that is 90 degrees, and I just figured out the measure of angle A was 34 degrees, then what does the measure of angle B have to be? It must be 56 degrees. Because again, all the angles must add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so now we go to something like this. On the back, your should look something like this. All I did was put it in X and a Y so I can have a variable for what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so this one I only know one side length and I know two angle measures. And I gotta be able to figure out all the other pieces. So again, see if you can figure out as much as you can on your own and then compare what you got versus what, what I got. Okay, so I start here. DE, well I already knew that. DE is 14. Okay, so what do I wanna go after next? Let me try to get EF. Let me try to get this X over here. Okay. So let me cover this back up again. So if I'm trying to get the X, this is the angle that I know. I know this side, and I want this side. So I'm covering up the Y. So in relation to 58 degrees, what side is this, and what side is this? In relation to the 58, this is the opposite side, and I have the adjacent side. So again, which trig function uses the opposite side and the adjacent side? That is tan. That's why I have tan 58, the tan of this angle, equals the opposite side, which is x, over the adjacent side, which is 14. So I have tan 58 equals x over 14. Then I multiply both sides by 14 to clear out that fraction on the bottom. And when I do that, I get 14 times tan 58 equals x, because these 14s cancel, I have the x all by itself. So I go to my calculator, I put 14 times tan 58, and I get that X is roughly 22.4. And at this point, again, I can do Pythagorean theorem again. Because once I have the X, once I know this piece, I can do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and I can get that EF. Did I? I guess I didn't do that. I guess I went ahead and did it. Again, I more than one way that I could have done it. I thought I had done Pythagorean theorem, but it looks like I didn't. So I got that the X is 22.4. So EF is 22.4. Again, at this point, I probably could have and should have just done Pythagorean theorem, but I guess I just wanted to show you examples. So I went back to my picture. I went back to the 58 degree angle. And if I want the Y now, so there's 58. Now if I want the Y, this again, this is the side that I'm given. This is the side that I want. This is the adjacent side to 58. This is the hypotenuse, so I used cosine. And so I let, let cosine of 58 degrees be equal to the adjacent side, which is 14, over the hypotenuse, which is y. Multiply both sides by y to clear out that fraction on the bottom, which gives me y cosine 58 equals 14, because again, these y's canceled, and I have 14 over there all by itself. Divide both sides by cosine of 58, and then these cosine 58's will cancel, and I get y is equal to 14, divided by cosine 58, put that in my calculator, and I get that y is equal to 26.4, which is again, that was equal to df. Okay, and the f, that was pretty easy. Well, I already had, that's, if this is 58 degrees, and that's 90, then angle f must be 32 degrees. Okay, two more examples. All right, Baldwin Street, and was that, how do you pronounce that, Dunedin or Dunedin? It's the steepest street, no, steep, yeah, steepest street in the world. It has a grade of 38%. We'll talk about that here in a second. To the nearest degree, what angle does Baldwin Street make with a horizontal line? When it says grade right here, grade is just slope. It's, it, it's rise over run. And so if it has a grade of 38%, all it means is that it, it rises 38 feet for every 100 that it runs. So again, that 38% is just slope. It's rise over run. So it rises 38 feet for every 100 feet that it runs. So there's my triangle. So it looks something like that. And I'm trying to figure out what this angle is. So of course, now that I've got the picture drawn, it's pretty easy to see what I should do. 
if this is the angle that I'm after, and this is the sides, these are the sides that I know, compared to this angle, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side. So again, which function uses opposite and adjacent? It's tangent. So I have tan x equals 38 divided by 100. I do second tan, 38 divided by 100 on my calculator, and I get that x equals 21 degrees. All right, one more. The vertex angle of an isosceles triangle measures 104 degrees. Okay, so we got to remember some stuff about isosceles triangles and vertex angles. Find the altitude of the triangle if its base measures 18 centimeters, round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so let's draw a good picture. Okay, start off with, a, with an isosceles triangle. So I know that these two sides got to be the same. It then tells you that the vertex angle is 104 degrees. So my 104 degrees goes right there. So this angle, the vertex, these are called base angles. This is my vertex angle, 104 degrees. Okay, then it says find the altitude of the triangle if its base measures 18 centimeters. Well, if it's 18 from here to here, once I drop in this altitude right down the middle, then each one of these is nine. So this is nine and this is nine. And that angle that was 104, I cut it in half, so now each one of these is 52. So now basically I've got a little triangle right here. Okay, so now I know this is 9, and I know this angle is 52, and I want this piece. So if this angle is 52 degrees, and I know this length is 9, and I want this piece, again, you have to ask yourself, what piece do I know, and what piece am I looking for in relation to the angle that I've got? If that's 52, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side. So again, that should be ringing some bells by now. I got to use tan. So that's what I did. I came over here and I said let tan 52 be equal to the opposite side, which is 9, over the adjacent side, which I called x. Multiplied both sides by x to clear the fraction. And I get this. x times tan 52 is equal to 9. Divide both sides by tan 52 to get the x by itself. I, I did there. These tan 52s will then cancel, and it gives me x equals 9 divided by the tan of 52, which if I put that in the calculator, 9 divided by tan 52, it's just 7. All right, a lot more practice in class.